Luke, uh, let's say I give you that there is fine tuning um, in particle physics, cosmology, that this is a real phenomenon. Um, what can we then say about the implications of it? What are the categories of, of implications? Uh, I, I'm, I'm familiar with, but I'd like to hear your, your view in terms of a design or a theological interpretation, multiverse and other, other kinds of things. But in terms of the people working in the field, be, be they philosophers or scientists, uh, what are the um, what follows from this in, in, in sort of a grand from a grand perspective? So, in in cases of fine tuning in the past in physics, sometimes it just means we need to go and get a better model of physics. It just means that our there's something wrong with the theory we have, and we should look for a deeper explanation of these numbers. So I think one of the reasons why we're here at this conference, the physics of fine tuning, is to sort of explore some of those ideas. But I think why there's would that a be the case, though. If 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 it's something is fine tuned, do we need a different rule, a law of physics? Well, it seems like there's a there's an itch there to scratch. That if we could if we could explain uh. why a number had this particular value, we would understand something about the universe. Uh, and so in, in previous cases of fine tuning, so I mean, you could talk about various historical cases you could frame in this light. So one of them is in, in I don't know if you want to go in that sort of old school detail, but in, 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 if you thought that the Earth was at the center of the solar system, Ptolemy's old model, then there's a very interesting sort of slightly weird fact about the night sky that you never see Mercury and Venus too far from where the sun is. Uh -huh. you, at midnight, when the sun's down there, yeah. you never see Mercury up there. Yeah. Why would that be? It seems like Mercury could be anywhere if they're just yeah. all going around, so you need some kludge, fine-tuning <laughs> kludge to put that together. Yeah. Once you go to a model where the sun's at the center, and Mercury and Venus are in the middle, suddenly you understand why you yeah. always see it, because they are closer to them. So we have, we have cases like that where there's a niche there to be scratched, and once we have this new uh, new model, we okay. sort of understood it better. But I think on a on a deeper level, there's there's sort of a, a deeper issue that fine tuning un, un, unearths, and that's you know I like to imagine I, I put this to you know popular level audiences. Imagine at some point in some future conference, uh, you know Einstein's great 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 granddaughter Alberta walks up to a blackboard and writes down some equations and we've sort of finished physics, right? We've, we've discovered the ultimate laws of our universe. They're all up there on a blackboard. Then we sort of, you know, a round of applause, and then we try to think what we would do next in that situation. Um, and one of the things that fine tuning seems to show is uh, the ability of our universe to make compl complex things is a sort of, is a very specific property of the laws that we have in this universe. Maybe there won't be the constants we know about on that board, but it seems like we can generalize the lesson here that of all the other ways the universe could have been, all the other things you could have written down on a blackboard, complexity is not something you, you get for free. It's not something you necessarily get out of simple laws. They could just have very simple, not complicated uh, com uh, uh, consequences. But there seems something interesting about the way our universe is on that blackboard. So, um, Therefore, therefore, I think if you think that that needs an explanation, you're looking for something beyond science. So maybe, maybe you can just be the naturalist and say whatever ends up on the board is just it and we're done. But if we still see the kind of fine-tuning in the sense of uh, our laws have a property that most other laws don't, then we, we still feel like there's something there to be explained. Um, and so then you're on to other explanations. Um, like maybe there's a multiverse, but even then you, there would be the, uh, you know, the equations of the multiverse would end up on a board as well. So if you're really looking beyond science, you know, there's obviously the idea of a creator, which would, would make some sense out of why you would make, why a creator would want to make a universe in which uh, complex things, things that can have you know, moral properties and do morally good things would exist. There are other possibilities, too, beyond science. Uh, there's everything in Eastern religions, cosmic consciousness, sure. there's uh, pantheistic views. Yeah. Uh, there's, a, there's a whole host. Uh, yeah, I mean, you, you wouldn't go, uh, e even if you wanted to go beyond science, and even if you were non-naturalistically inclined, uh, you wouldn't go, there's no reason to go to a 
Abrahamic God. I mean, unless you had other things there. I mean, fine-tuning at best would give you a, a question whether there's something beyond science. Yes. So fine-tuning out itself won't tell you what that thing is. Modulo the fact that it, it's supposed to explain why our universe does complex things like create persons who can interact and have a chat in lovely places and all of that. So you would like some sort of story beyond science which explains that fact. But there seem to be a lot of stories which would do that. The, the thing to do then is to look for other evidence about what that thing might be. Mm. But if fine-tuning itself points in that direction, that's still a very interesting and <laughs> slightly controversial uh, conclusion. Yeah, I, I would say of, of working physicists and working cosmologists who accept fine-tuning as a legitimate discourse, which is, uh, I, I think, a, a certain kind of progress, mm. um, you don't necessarily find the majority uh, believing in things beyond the science. Uh, do you? No, I don't think so. And I think for a lot of them it's because they understand what a scientific explanation is and why that you know, scratches a particular explanatory itch. And things beyond science would just create more problems than they solved. Mm. So uh, I've you know, written a book with Geraint, who you talked to yeah. about this. I think for him, it's really that this the God would just, is a bit of a non-explanation. I mean, you can sort of understand, you know, maybe God would want to do this or that, but then you're sort of reading God's mind and, you know, do you really know what God would want? And it's a, you're, you're postulating a totally unknown being as well. Yeah. So and there's, there's a lot to be <laughs> discussed beyond <laughs> fine-tuning. 